In 2001, myself and my husband, who's um, called Stephen, you've already heard from him, uh, started a project in the Gated and Jarrah circuit in the Methodist circuit called Mind the Gap. And you can probably tell from the accent that I kind of bored from up there anyway. As a project, we had two main aims, really, that we were very aware of right from the beginning. The first was that we wanted to work with the folk who were already in the church, who were kind of of the Generation X um, age group. Those that we felt in particular were in danger of walking away from established church because they were finding it difficult to remain there through feeling um, sometimes excluded or certainly isolated because there wasn't that many people of their age group in the churches in which they were uh, working and worshipping in. So we thought it would be good to gather those good folk together for support and for, uh, for discipleship and for alternative worship. It was alternative back in 2001. And ultimately to help them in their faith so that they could, they could be used to, to go back into their local church situation and help with renewal in that context as well. And our second main aim was missional. We wanted to see people come to hear the good news of Jesus and choose to follow Jesus for themselves. And we wanted to create the kind of atmosphere uh, where that could be, uh, that could be, I'll never say easy, but where that could be a little bit easier to embark on. So what was it then? Basically, it was a cell church initiative. We were based in cells and essentially those cells were there to uh, develop disciples. Uh, as well as meeting in cells for discipleship, there was the corporate gathering for monthly alternative worship. There was also regular faith finding courses. We just happened to use Alpha, that seemed to work for us. And there was seeker events as well, which were usually socially based, maybe meeting in a club or something like that, and, uh, or a a family barbecue, somewhere where we could meet together to continue to develop relationships, but also where we could um, quite comfortably invite our not yet Christian friends. We didn't plant a fresh expression of church. We followed a vision, and a few years down the line, we heard about fresh expressions and we thought, ah, that's what we're doing, that's what we are. So it's kind of just allowing God to lead us into a new area and to trust him that he was going to show us what we were actually doing and what we were about. Now, what I've just presented there, it, it's kind of, it's not rocket science, is it? But it kind of worked for us and it worked in our context. I've been asked to share with you some of the highlights from the journey that we had. First of all, it was wonderful to see folk come into mind the gap who were already Christians, but being renewed in their faith and seeing ways of, of uh, doing things perhaps a little bit differently that worked within their generation, and then taking that back into their local context, into their local church, and doing mission there in a new way. It was fantastic to see that, and to see the knock-on effect for some of the local Methodist churches in that area. For me personally, the biggest highlight was and always will be seeing people like Gary and Norma and Ashley, who came from what has to be said quite difficult backgrounds, but somehow coming to meet Jesus and coming to appreciate his great love for them and deciding that they too wanted to follow him in their lives. Biggest highlight ever, people. Biggest highlight ever. Another highlight, but also a difficulty if I'm honest, was being with Christians of my generation as they struggled to reconcile the faith that they had in God with what they were experiencing in the inherited church. I don't say that to insult the inherited church in any way. All I do is say it to encourage you not to underestimate the very real struggle that some of our brothers and sisters in Christ have in remaining in and working and worship worshiping in the established church setting. Some of the lessons learned. I guess uh, to begin with, one of the main lessons that was learned quite early on was how important it is to have support, um, particularly support from those who are in authority over you in some way, 
uh, particularly if that's in a denominational setting. One of the other lessons learned is to do with focus. At the time of leading Mind the Gap, I was also ministering in another Methodist church uh, where we were meeting in dilapidated premises. So I was a project manager for a £1 million rebuild, trying to manage a church that was displaced into three different areas for over uh, for a, about a year, whilst running a fresh expression of church as well. So my second point is keep, keep your focus. That's a lesson learned. Keep your focus in what you're doing. It's so difficult not to be distracted when things come at you from all sides. It's so difficult not to um, resort back into doing things in the way that you've al always done it, because actually that's a little bit easier than to, to keep on trying in a, new, in a new way. If I can be very honest with you, at times I struggled with guilt as well. A guilt whenever one area of work was being left undone because I was focusing on another area of work. Again, I was so grateful to my team and to my superintendents who really helped me to see priorities and not to worry too much about what wasn't being done and to praise God for what was being done. And the third lesson that I learned was uh, the importance of growing local indigenous leaders and mentoring them, growing leaders from grassroots up who would not necessarily been people who'd gone off to college and been trained and been sent, but people who lived there and worked there. And I'll come on to that more in a minute. So where's Mind the Gap now? Well, I'm not actually working with Mind the Gap hands-on now. I left Mind the Gap last year. The year before that, I helped Mind the Gap, I uh, helped to lead them through a kind of major transition. Many of the people who were involved in Mind the Gap were also still involved with a local Methodist church and one of two churches in particular. And these two churches, after this period of time, were now growing. They were seeing uh, new people come into faith. They were doing more with discipleship and they were working uh, with new forms of worship as well. And so some of the Mind the Gap folk were actually doing too much, nothing new there. They were uh, working with Mind the Gap, but they were going into their local church and they were trying to help them to transition, help them to be renewed as well by taking the things that they were learning from Mind the Gap and implementing them in their local church. And it was working really well for the local church. It wasn't working so well for the people who were working in two different areas. And we freely released those people to go back to their local church, knowing full well that we would be left with very few people. However, we were left with a handful of people who belonged to no other church and saw Mind the Gap as their spiritual church. And so in 2009, Mind the Gap became more formally recognized as a church. However, as, as one of the new members of that church said, it's not, Mind the Gap's not a real church, you know. It's not a real church. And I said, what do you mean it's not a real church? Well, it's more like a community. Mind the Gap still has the same values. That hasn't changed in the slightest. It has a very strong mission imperative. They wouldn't see it like that. They would say, well, we just want to tell people about Jesus. And its leadership is totally lay and indigenous. Before I left, I spent time mentoring some local leaders and one in particular who just happens to be called Stephen as well to confuse you. And it's confused many people over the years. But uh, three years ago, Stephen became my assistant leader. Two years ago, we co-led Mind the Gap together. One year ago, he led Mind the Gap and I became his assistant leader. And that paved the way for me then to move on without leaving that very small church without any real leadership. Those years with Mind the Gap were exciting and they weren't always easy, as you can guess. In fact, there was one year when so much went wrong, I really thought everything was going to implode, including myself, if I'm honest. As I say, establishing a fresh expression and leading a fresh expression of church has not been the easiest of journeys. But would I do it again? You bet I would.